pass. Okay, there we go. So, uh, Raven, uh, congratulations on the victory. That's first and foremost. And Thank you. Secondly, those were some really good games. I mean, did you did you guys come in thinking it would be you know s such a close series? Um, I, I did not know much about any of their team. Uh, I don't even know what their record is right now, to be honest. Uh, you happen to know? Yeah, they have one win, one draw, and two losses. Okay, so yeah, not knowing that, the, just knowing it in hindsight, you know, I imagine they're just on par with us. A lot of the the Div A teams I'm seeing at the bottom end are are kind of evening out against each other. So. Um, but going into it, no, I didn't know what to expect. I just knew we were going to play our game. Yeah, so did you did you guys walk into any of those matches saying, like, we've won this with your drafts? Or did, did you look at it and say, uh, they have a really nice team. We're going to just have to play really well. Honestly, going into team one, or game one, we thought that uh, we had a better draft. I'm, I'm never a huge fan of Gul'dan and Diablo together because there's just so much. Even if you coordinate it well, they don't do anything with each other. It's just Diablo alt and Gul'dan throws his basic abilities, and the fear is there for a disengage. We had the hard engage, and we knew that if we could just time our alts properly, we were going to win the fights. And ultimately, that's what ended up happening at that last team fight and winning us the game. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. Um, are, are these comps that you guys have practiced before in general? Um, yeah, we, we've been liking the Maev. Um, honestly, we're trying to force people to, to ban it against us, but until they learn that uh, that's not a good idea to leave her up, we're going to keep using her. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, no, we, we're learning to, to draft around it. Um, uh, first couple of weeks we went into it first off we had we had a sub week one um you know they're no longer with the team and then week two we played with our starter at the time and it's just we weren't able to get a lot of practice in so we had to swap out one of our starters and since or not, not week two but the first week the first two games week two we had we started with tempest and without a lot of practice tempest had just came in and showed his skill and his ability to to hold his own um and the rest of the team is falling in line between our two you know what i would consider our strongest players and our dps roles um so we're building comps that suit them and we're falling in behind them with what we can help them make plays with yeah that's that's definitely a really interesting way to go it's essentially accentuate the strength of your team by building around the strongest player of your team versus kind of like trying to build around your weakest player on the team which you'll often see as the other side like what can you play set, uh, if you're the weakest player on the team and then play that well and we'll build comps around that it's kind of like let's give the tool to the, the strongest player to try and make the plays and kind of, and kind of essentially if you will like dota or lol style lol, uh, lol style carry rather than like the opposite yeah yeah carrying in this game is definitely not uh not easy to do uh especially in a competitive setting so you know if we if we think at any point that we have a, a upper hand and skill you know we're not we're, we're not gonna really care all that much we're just gonna we're gonna play our game and and let the game speak for itself and that's what we did this, this evening so one thing i found interesting was uh both energy and i were talking about it that you guys chose Alex, and Alex, I feel like, is not getting the play she deserves on certain maps like Infernal Shrines. Um, so, it, are are you guys valuing Alex high? And did you decide because you had the Stukov pick in the second game not to pick Alex, even though it's a really good map for her there as well? Um, I I made a joke earlier this evening because we scrimmed a little bit before this game that basically the team with Stukov wins. <laughs> and, <laughs> Um, we, they took the Stuke off away and no, Alex, Alex does well with the dive comp, um, just because she had so much support. And then of course, Infernal Shrines, it's an Alex map. Is she a requirement? No, but I, I think early on, I, I was never a huge fan of Alex. I, I didn't know where she fit in the meta mm -hmm. and my teammates, um, Tempest in particular brought up that, you know, Alex, it is her best map. And we like the map. And, you know, it's, again, 
teams are going to see what we do well and they're going to probably start taking it away from us and that's fine we'll adapt but why not play a character who is objectively strong on a map on her map and let her let her do what she does well yeah and i definitely agree with that especially if people are going to uh, respect ban alex from you guys that opens up the window where you can pick up the Malfurion or the Stukov, whatever they have opted, you know, not to pick, depending on on how the draft ultimately it turns out. But it feels like you now have a pocket pick available on maps that that are very popular. I mean, Infernal Shrines is insanely popular at this point, where you can pretty much guarantee that one of the two teams will pick Infernal Shrines. Yeah, and that's that's what happened this evening. Red Rockets picked in Shrines for us, and I'm like. All right, well, that, that's okay. We'll we'll play, we'll play what we play every day, and then we'll we'll pick our our second best map, uh, well, one of our second best maps, and uh, we beat you on your map, and then we're gonna beat you on our map. Would you say there's any particular thing that you guys have significantly improved on? Because the first thing I noticed in the first game was that your rotation seemed very crisp in terms of clear wave, go to next wave, clear wave go to the next wave and there was very little um like uh, of sitting around figuring out what to do it seemed like um well and that's the thing gets a game two on that same topic in just a moment game one um we have a a general rotation of we have good wave clear we we want to beat people in the macro game we we do not want to lose the macro game we want to have them on their back foot once they're on the back foot then we start bullying them around with how the comp is designed to play the play. Game two, we swept, we switched it up a little bit and we were kind of camping our DPS in top lane and middle lane. Um, one of the others, uh, it may have been Tempest or I, I'm not 100% sure who said it, but um, we're gonna keep a DPS because I wanted to run a, a 2-2-1. He's like, no, let's rotate our Diablo and Stukov so that uh, Muramask can pick up souls. So we did the rotation. Um, I think it worked out well for us in both games and uh, in my opinion, game one, we were actually falling a bit behind. They were they were camping over us, and we weren't um, we we were having to respond to that. And at times, we had to just decide, well, we're just going to let this lane go, and we're going to try and win the objective. Yep, and that, I did notice that part. Like, so my 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 praise for your rotations were, was the four man, uh, in particular, since Red Rockets did capitalize on the situation of picking up those shamans like you were saying, and then you had to say, okay, we got to we gotta kind of just let it go where we can't do the objective. Those are your two choices at that point. Yeah, and I think we've learned early on um, in the season that we can't, we can't give objectives up to, mm -hmm. to, to good teams. Good teams are going to, they're going to beat us on the map. You know, if they beat us on the map, we're going to, we're going to give that up to them and say, okay, well, we're going to beat you on the objective because if we lose both, we're going to lose the game. So, you know, we, we got to win one of those things. And then the team fights will just fall in place as we figure out, you know, where are the weaknesses and where in their comp and where's the strengths in ours. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to hand it off to energy. Would you like to ask any questions to uh, Raven? Yeah, sure. By the way, excellent play today. You were on the Stukov all game, right? Uh, Alex Stukov. Yeah. I'm, I'm the support player for our team. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Work by your team there. Um, one thing I want to notice is that, uh, or say, and ask a question is that every single game you guys split off, and went, somebody went top, somebody went bottom, and you started to soak early. Um, both both times you guys did that. So do you feel like that's a very important thing? So often I see a lot of teams just kind of converge in the middle, then they send people off. But however, you guys did the right thing and just sent two people up, up top and bottom and allowed them to soak early. Do you think that's a very important factor right now in the meta, or do you feel like people kind of just need to feel it out in the middle and then spread out uh it's match dependent we look at the draft and as we go into the game we determine okay is there any value to be gained from fighting mid do we think we're going to pick up an early kill uh do we have a stronger early team fight or is there is there anything to be gained in regards to gaining getting stacks early both of those games their team between the Gul'dan, the hanzo Oh, what else did they have game two? They had some other other characters that could stack that all we'd be doing in the in the middle is giving them stacks. So we just decided, mm -hmm. all right, we're gonna split off, we're gonna get to the soak early and try and keep them interested mid as much as possible, get the lead in that soak, and then play the game out from there. 
Um, it, it, we, we, we struggled with rotations, again, as a new team early on, and, and it's, I think it's from week to week, it's getting better and better. Um, it, it's, it's really a, statistic, uh, a strategic call as to, okay, is, is there something to be gained from fighting mid? Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, another quick question about the second match, guys, Adam Volskaya. Why the Li Ming pick and why the Tychus pick? Um, Tychus, he, he offers a lot, he has a lot of things to offer in general. Um, number one, he's got a decent amount of poke, uh, with the grenade. He has the ability to burn the objective. He is a, a decently, a decent counter to Garrosh because of the armor. Armor is meaningless to Tychus. And then he has great siege with Odin. So there, <laughs> that first, um, first push at top keep. We wanted to to pop Odin after the after the uh, Triglov went down to finish the keep, and uh, I don't know if it was a miscommunication or just a, a misplay on our part in general. That keep should have gone down. That's why we sent Li Ming to go and finish it because we wanted that keep and we were pissed that it didn't go down. Um, the Ming pick was we debated on a finisher, and we knew that a dive hero against uh, Mouth and Garrosh was risky. So Ming has both poke and finish potential. So that that was the thinking behind Lee Ming. And I think Tempest did a great job. Uh, all my players did a fantastic job this evening. Yeah, Tempest was looking very solid and comfortable on the Lee Ming. I mean, he, he did multiple sprays just to show off his finesse. And I like how what he did there, where he just, you guys sent him to the top to finish off that tower. <laughs> he got out for free. And lo and behold, you guys ended up holding that pressure on the lanes, you know, prepping all the items ready for the objective. And you guys played it very well there. Excellent job by your team. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, be, so be, before we go, um, is there is there anything you you'd like to say about like Red Rockets? Like any suggestion you'd like to help them improve based on on what you saw against them tonight? Um, I, I don't know who their shot caller is. I have a pretty good idea of who it is. Um, might want to. I want to think about your decision making as a team, but otherwise, I, I think you guys played pretty well. Uh, it seems like there's some discombobulation uh, on objectives sometimes. And I don't know if that's just because we were in in their face so much, but uh, I, I want to give a shout out to uh, Humansly. It was a it was a great game. You played a great Sonya. Um, I, I I hope that we see you again at the end of the season, but uh, I doubt it. <laughs> Well, best of luck in your future games, guys. Um, this, I believe, was your first first like official win, right? Yep, first domination. Yeah. Well, congrats on the first domination, and that'll uh, put you definitely up there now, moving moving on up in the world of the scoreboard. So, best of luck once again, and have a good rest of your night. Yep. Thank you very much, you guys as well. Thank you for the cast. No problem. Take care. Yeah, so that's going to wrap it up for me and Energy tonight. 